Hello and welcome to Nerdy Unreal Dev and I'm going to do a relatively quick tutorial actually on how to make fireflies in Unreal. Now these aren't realistic fireflies, these are more like the sort of cartoony uh, fireflies to kind of give you an idea. Um, this is actually a scene from uh, a scene I used as a portfolio piece. We're gonna make fireflies better than this, actually. Uh, don't mind my long outliner view. This was before I started using foliage, though sometimes there's problems with foliage. So let's get started. Just gonna... So we're gonna go down here, FX, Niagara Admitter. And then under template emitters, we're going to pick hanging particulates because this emitter actually starts you off with most of what you would need to get a cartoony uh, firefly. Uh, for those who are wondering, you get the FX tab by uh, going into plugins, FX, and then enabling Niagara and Niagara extras. So we're just going to go here and rename i've also started giving um all of my niagara emitters like any or ns uh, since i originally did this scene fireflies 2 electric boogaloo so we'll open up the scene and it actually once we zoom in so you can see the particles, it has most of what we would need. Um, but we're going to make this better. So for starters, uh, we're going to up the spawn rate. So now that there's now there's more of these fireflies. Uh, we're going to leave the bait box location the same as well as the sphere location. We are going to up the size, uh, so more like three, five, get a little bit of variance. And now you can like really see them. They exist. And the reason for leaving both box location and sphere location is if you have just sphere location, it's a sphere. If you leave just box location, it's a box. Have them both on, and you get more of a mass. Date age is good. Now, this is actually interesting. Um, basically, uh, it's using a noise field to uh, make it move. So rather than using acceleration or something else to get uh, for a force, it's using a Perlin noise, which we're actually going to reset these to the default. Going to leave the pan noise field on and reduce the drag just a bit. And now you can see they're moving more like bugs. And it's not one single movement. It's very random. More like a mass of insects. Sprite size scale is actually pretty good because it looks like that they're kind of flickering in and out, in and out. Like I said, this is going to be a quick one. <laughs> now, here in scale color, uh, you can have a bit of fun. Uh, you could have, like, you're on an alien planet. And there's fuchsia fireflies. Or teal. But we're just going to go for uh, more of a 
more of an orangey sort of gives off that like Ghibli feel. <laughs> Uh, though, only ever watch Grape at the Fireflies with a box of tissues. You'll need it. So this is just the salt force and velocities to make sure the curl no noise force is working. And then under here in render, all of this is good. We're going to hit uh, this little plus sign. Light renderer. Uh, now, you could just leave this alone uh, and just use this for the light radius. But what I'm actually going to do is under particle update. So as the, as the particle updates each frame, uh, I'm going to add the variable for the light radius and it updates per frame. Now, this option is probably more expensive because it's checking for light every frame. Uh, it does kind of work with this, uh, as you'll see uh, once this is more done, because the light goes in and out as the fireflies do and as they move closer to the ground. But again, it depends on the scene you're using it in, uh, whether... You know, it's a more cinematic scene, or if it's a game scene. So, we're just going to leave this at 20 for now. And so, yeah, so now we've got a bunch of particles. Don't really see any light because uh, in the editor, nothing really shows up. And then, down here, we're going to right-click FX, Niagara System. Um, and then we want any Fireflies 2. So I'm going to create a new system from a set of selected emitters. I found the one. It's showing a lot of, um, due to the fact I have uh, show engine content and show plugin content on, it's showing a lot of the defaults. So hit OK. I could have technically just made this, uh, emitter just straight out of the system. That is something you can do. Um, this is just kind of working with Niagara Strength of you can make multiple uh, emitters and mix and match them in various systems. So depending on your workflow, that is definitely something you can do. But since this is only going to use one emitter, I technically could have just made it straight out of the system just by like adding the um, hanging particulates and making all the changes there. So if all if you know for certain that what you're the system you're making is definitely gonna um, be one emitter and you're not gonna use that emitter for anything else, you can definitely just make it straight out of the system. There's nothing stopping you. Well, except for the workflow of your VFX team. But they'll tell you what you can and can't do. So we're in here. And we're not actually going to really do anything. But now that it's in a system, I'm just going to close that. And we're going to put this under particles so I can always find it. You know, it seems a little small. So we can just pull up our system. And we can do a few things. So... There, uh, there are scalability options. I personally haven't had a lot, a ton of luck with them, but you could, um, say, so the emitter itself you can increase the size of.
uh, though what will be really useful is going into the box in the sphere and upping it. So like, and then just make this 150. Uh, for those of you who are wondering what this green is, this is the default. So the this yellow arrow, sort of back arrow, is reset to default uh, value, just Unreal's default. The green arrow is uh, reset the input to the uh, default in this emitter. So you have two options for reset. And we'll just do that. So things are a bit bigger and you can see it right here. We're not seeing a ton of the light. Um, make sure. Oh, that's why. So I forgot to uncheck. Um, use inverse squared. This means that it's basically uh, whether to use physically based inverse square fall off from the light. And it's going to base the radius scale on this. But we have our little set variables. So it should Why does nothing work? So we are going to boost that value a bit. Oh, now there's light. Now it kind of woke up and was like, wait a second. We're going to drop that back down. Yeah, now you can see little bits of light. And you can see the light comes in as the fireflies do. And because the fireflies are moving and they're going in and out, uh, the light is as well. Now that's of course not necessary. And you could have it just come in when the particle spawns. But it's a cool little bonus effect. So there you go. That is the very basics of making some cartoon fireflies to set the mood for your scene. And of course you can always mess with various settings and whatnot. But yeah, there you go. Have a good one. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe and consider donating to my coffee and possibly following me on Twitter. Uh, have a good one.